Good morning. Good morning. Madam Chair and members of the committee, good morning. I would like to thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. My name is Cecil Rubain. I am a DC native and the trustee of ATU Local 1764, which represents bus operators at the circulator. I am here today in an effort to update you on the current state of affairs at the circulator. On February 29th, our shop steward and a familiar face to most of you, Flynn Tiny Burke, testified on behalf of his members that the wages at the circulator were substandard and leading to displacement of DC residents who work there. He also testified about the working conditions and the overall safety of the circulator. To date, we have yet been able to make any progress in discussions with First Transit towards our goal of achieving wage parity with our counterparts at Metrobus. As a reminder, top pay at Metro is $8.22 more per hour than top pay at the DC circulator. We do the same job on the same streets, but are not equally compensated. Our members love their jobs and their passengers. This is reflected by an unprecedented 98% satisfaction rating with the service of our, that our members provide. One would think that such outstanding service would be worthy of better compensation. Unfortunately, that this is not the case. We have made repeated requests of the contractor and DDOT to provide for transparency in our attempts to achieve our goal. So far, we have been stonewalled. In October of last year, we filed an FOIA request for this revenue agreement. As of today, we have not received it. What we have been told by WMATA is that our request is under review for possible redaction by contractor, citing proprietary information. This information is unusual considering that we have made nearly identical requests in the past and had reams of documents delivered that required no such review. This includes prior revenue agreements with the current contractor. We hope you can assist us in obtaining these critical documents. Another major concern for our members is safety. At the February hearing, Director Dorm, dorm hole of DDOT, I knew I was going to mess that up, but of DDOT, Leaf of DDOT was asked by the committee whether or not they had conducted any audits of the current contractor. He stated that a maintenance audit was conducted, which finally went public thanks to WTOP. Upon hearing that this audit existed, we conducted our own safety survey in March. Much like the DDOT audit, our results revealed that 90% of the fleet surveyed had safety defects that under WMATA procedure would have required immediate repair before the bus could be put into service. Yet, the circulator, a supervisor with no maintenance qualifications, signed these buses into service despite the defects flagged. Why is the circulator held to lower standard? What corrective measures are being taken to address the defects that the mayor and the DDOT knew in August of last year were putting workers and riders in danger? In any transit system, recruitment and retention is vital to maintaining safe, reliable service. Out of 182 drivers in the last employee update, 70 had less than one year of service. DC needs to make an investment in its workforce. This will not only help to improve safety by retaining experienced operators, but will ensure that the circulator does not continue <coughs> down the path of deterioration, de 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 deteriorating service that other privatized transit systems like Metro Access have. With the contract appointing to agencies and agencies pointing to contractor, Local 1764 once again requests that the district allocate $3 million in its FY 2017 budget 
for the purpose of creating living wages for circulator operators on par with the Metrobus colleagues, employees who endure mismanagement and dangerous maintenance shortcuts by their employer and yet still provide first-class service should be paid, a wage that reflects the dedication and the professionalism, a wage that allows them to afford to live in the city and serve. I thank you for your time, and I stand ready to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the whole matter about the circulator is um, very troubling, and I just want to tell you, and uh, I don't want to use too charged a word, but um, you weren't the only one, how shall I say, stonewalled on getting this information. Um, when my staff asked after the um, oversight hearing for the audit, we were told, and I'm quoting from the um, Chief of Staff, due to procurement concerns, the possibility of litigation and sensitive information about safety and security, DDOT is holding the analysis from these audits, audits as confidential at this time, which is where it stood until yesterday out of the blue we were emailed a copy. And I think that was primarily because you all had gotten yes. a copy. Yes. So you got the copy. We didn't even get the copy until uh, it was made available to us after you uh, Yes. got the information. So that's very troubling, and I understand there's a January audit as well, and maybe some of the things have been corrected, but um, I would think that uh, an audit, which we now know the details of which show uh, dirty and dangerous buses, should have been something made available. Um, and I'm happy for you to get it, but I'm, I'm appalled from my end of it that we didn't get it. Um, I, I would think that that would be something that should be shared uh, with the council. In any case, um, we have to get underneath this. And as Councilmember Evans said, part of the problem is the way this whole thing evolved. You know what the what the circulator was all about, um, and you know who's minding the store. Maybe nobody's minding the store. It looks like something like that. Um, but ultimately, it has to come back to us because it is our bus system. And if we're letting DDOT uh, run it for us, and then DDOT is allowing a private contractor to run it, we have to, you know, oversee this, and we have to do so with adequate information. So, first of all, let me thank the union for uh, provoking this, uh, because it's something that, as I said, we very much need to know. Um, and there's that issue. Then there's the issue about fair treatment of the employees, of course. Uh, and uh, on top of that, you know, as we start to replace the fleet, there's another issue about what buses will replace the other buses. One of the distinct things about the circulator is that the, the kind of bus, uh, I'm sorry, you should put us on rounds because, you know, I can go on forever. Um, and I don't know how much time I've taken already. Uh, the buses are, um, they're a brand. The way you enter, you know, from, from the ground, the, the, the way they look, everything about them makes them distinct and attractive to the ridership. So. Um, again, I want to thank you, and, and, and thank you also, Pastor, for, for your uh, testimony, uh, because, you know, this, uh, this is obviously something we're going to be asking a lot of questions about. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm going to focus on this circulator. So, uh, again, my brief comments. The circulator is a critical component of our transportation system here in the District of Columbia and needs to be run effectively and efficiently. So let's start on the wages side. Um, it, it is very disturbing to me to learn that uh, people working for the circulator are being paid substantially less than at Metro. So, um, Reverend Edmonds and uh, Mr. Rubain, um, have you had a meeting with or at least approached the chairman of the council about this? The chairman, Phil Mendelson, is the person in charge with our budget. Uh, at the end of the day, you believe there's about $3 million needed to bring our wages for the circulator incomparable to what they are in Metro. So starting, have you had an opportunity to brief the chairman? Councilman Evans, yes. We've uh, identified $3 million would actually plug the hourly rate wage gap. That doesn't even address the pension or health and welfare benefits. But okay. Count Councilman Mendelson has been approached, yes. Okay, has, has he personally been briefed on this? Do you yes. know offhand? You have, okay. And what was his response? And do you know what he had to say about that or? Pastor. Mm -hmm. He said. Council member Mendelson was very attentive to the plight of the circulators. Uh, 
for there was nothing concrete offered in the way of solving the matter. Okay. And uh, you've had an, I've had an opportunity to talk with you, Reverend Edmonds, and we're going to meet next week. And I believe you met with uh, Councilmember Che about this as well, and with our director, Mr. Dormstro. Do you know offhand if it was I was not in the meeting with Councilmember Che. Okay. But, Mr. Uh, but the director offered the same sort of comments as Councilmember Mendelson. Okay. So our job then on the council is going to be to try and identify. Um, you're talking, I don't know what the figure is, but you're using a figure of $3 million in order to at least bring uh, comparable wages for the circulator um, employees versus what we're paying at Metro. Because again, the circulator is running the almost the identical service as Metro bus. And one of the reasons, I don't know the answer to this since I'm new as the chairman, but my recollection is that Metro it has, is involved with oversight, so we don't. So Metro doesn't run a bus down the same route that the circulators run on a bus. That there'd be some coordination, um, and so I have to determine what Metro's role is in this. Number one, but my point again to the salaries is that if you're doing the same work with the same everything, you ought to be paid the same. So, and what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, go ahead. Well, we have um, um, Mr. Dornjo has promised to get us a meeting with the mayor. And uh, it's been kind of hedged about when it's going to be. And because of the seriousness of this matter, we request it to be the first of the week, like on Monday. And we've been requesting this meeting for quite a while. And I think that right now the mayor would be someone who could be very important in this process of cutting through red tape. Uh, because uh, currently there is a contract negotiation going on between the circulator and First Transit. And of course, First Transit is telling us that they don't have that kind of money. And so any help that the city council and the mayor's office and DDOT can give would be greatly appreciated. Okay. And just to try and un unravel this governance structure, which is complicated. It's very complicated. It, it, it doesn't sound like First Transit actually has the money to pay that actually the city, DDOT, and I use DDOT as a city, actually funds this. Not and Metro doesn't fund it either, so it has to be DDOT that provides the funds. Yes, DDOT originally uh, set up the circulator, took charge of the circulator, and all the funding comes from your DC funds. Okay. Somehow they empowered WMATA to oversight, and then WMATA contra contracted out to First Transit. And who understands that? I don't know, but it, it, it confuses me why you have all these different layers of management and waste. Yeah. Why can't the city just run it by themselves? Well, it's a good question. So, so, num so number one, we want to focus on the salaries and see in this budget whether we can identify the funding that then would be available once the right. negotiations yes. take place between First Transit and the circulator whatever they agree on, that the money would be there. Because I can see where this is going. First Transit said, we don't have any money, so we can't pay anymore. You know, I, I got the whole drift of this. I did want to add yeah, go ahead, Robert. that First Transit is putting out rumors of a retaliation to workers who come forward to expose the uh, problems with the system. And we want to let First Transit know that Washington and the Faith Network will not stand idly by to allow that hap to happen. Okay, thank you. I've run out of time. I, I would like, I have a couple more questions. Maybe I can come back in a second round. Council Member uh, Che, for a couple of minutes. Sure. Um, let me turn to the, to the circulator, both uh, Mr. Rubain and Pastor Evans. Thank you for, for your testimony. Hello. One of the questions that I was going to ask you had to do with um, the, the vehicle replacement. Um, in Questions submitted in advance and responses back related to uh, to the committee. Um, the department has has talked about preparing to purchase 35 new buses to replace 29 vehicles currently reaching the end of their life, and then uh, six more that were provided by the operating contractor. Um, have you had any conversations about um, what the size of the total fleet that that represents a significant number of the total fleet uh, with new vehicles? But I also don't believe they're sitting on a shelf somewhere just to plug and play right into the system. Well, thank you for the question, Councilman Allen. You know, this um, DDOT seems to be not giving you the complete information. First of all, a nine-year-old city bus 
has only reached half of its life expectancy. If anyone read the report from the audit that DDOT uh, initiated, the report clearly stated that under normal circumstances, a transit bus has a life expectancy of 18 years. So is their fix going to be to waste nine years of the bus life expectancy because they didn't do the maintenance? And now they're saying, well, they're going to buy new buses. When are they going to buy them? And how soon will they be delivered? I mean, it sounds like a game of uh, shells, a money card game, where you just keep moving the shells around. Those buses, if they had been properly maintained, should have a life expectancy of 18 years. And also, another thing that bothers some to us is why DDOT gave WMATA a $750,000 uh, contract to oversee the the contract that they gave to First Transit, and it covers the salaries of between five and seven metro workers. It's concerning when the when the workers we have are making poverty wages. I mean, it's hard to understand, and it's hard I'm sure for the city council to understand why they have this extra layer. Uh, that seven hundred fifty thousand could go towards salaries or go to, towards equipment. <laughs> Well, I, all great points. I'm out of time, so I, I appreciate that. We'll yes. certainly, these are all fair questions that we'll be digging in deeper thank you with very the much. department. But thank you all very much. Thank and, you. And thank you, because you're the one who triggered us finding the audit, Councilman Allen. Well, you're you welcome. It takes a team, though. Well, <laughs> it's a team. <laughs> team. It's a great team. It takes a village. A whole village did it. Um, thank you. Um, you know, on the, uh, the circulator operating structure that they have, that they have a little graphic. It says DDOT plans the service, funds, has an MOU with WMATA, and direct contact with WMATA. But then it says for WMATA, procures and manages the contractor. Operations and bus maintenance oversight, and then direct contact with the contractor. Um, so there's, so, there's something missing here. It's sort of, you know, that... Um, but I, I want to talk to you more about the labor negotiations. If the contractor is saying, look, we have a pot of money by virtue of this contract that we have uh, with WMATA and then in turn with the District of Columbia, um, what are you negotiating over if they, you know, if you, if you say our wages are substandard and we should get a wage increase, but their comeback is, but we don't have the money? Yes. How can you, what, what, what's the negotiation about? You just sort of... Hear them say we don't have the money? Well, this is why two things happen. Well, and, and let me ask you as part of that, what if you negotiated effectively to get the amount of money that, you know, would put you on parity, then, then what would they do? They would just say, how, how would that work? You're getting advice here, I see. That's good. Well, but, but, but just like you, we take credit. We have multiple levels. Of no, that's good. That's good. Can you just let Mr. Lyons answer? Yes. The, the ability we have to negotiate this contract obviously is determined by the revenue contract that they have with First Transit. So when this revenue contract was let out, it was unfortunately sub, substantial wages were included in it. So First Transit's argument is that the city, DDOT, didn't want these workers to make a living wage. And unfortunately, and so you're saying the that whole bidder got the contract with these wages in the contract. I see. So your understanding is this is this is set already by the fact of the contract that they have with DDOT. Yes. So what are you negotiating for? Right now, we're negotiating for parity, and we. No, no, I understand that, no. but but they're saying it's impossible to get it because the contract with DDOT well, doesn't it, allow it, for. No, it says it's impossible to get it, all the money from them. They are willing to give some wages. But they cannot do the parity because DDOT's uh, revenue agreement didn't allow for that kind of money. More so advice they're putting is fingers at DDOT. What they're telling us at the table is we need to go to DDOT because DDOT set up this whole scenario. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, there's probably some truth to that. Because when DDOT let the contract out, they knew that the, there would be this big difference in wages between the metro drivers and the circulator drivers, and almost no benefits. 
So they built the contract on this substandard wage, yes. in other words. I and and that, that's why First Transit got the contract, because they were the low bidder. And so how do you account, if, if you know, I mean, this is, I'm just no. asking your opinion, but you know, you're, you're, you're there. How do you account then, is it the same reason why uh, First Transit is doing such a, what would appear to be a poor job on maintenance, preventive maintenance, and also cleanliness of the buses? Uh, well, one thing on maintenance is, these companies like First Transit do what they have to do to make a profit. Remember now, First Transit owns the transit system down in uh, Prince William County, Virginia, where it's all built in the contract. They have and they seem to do okay there, right? First Transit owns Greyhound, mm -hmm. Greyhound USA, Greyhound Canada. They own companies all over the country. It's not that they can't do it. It's what the contract makes them do. DC, DDOT did not negotiate a good contract. They gave them too much leeway, and they have no oversight. And DD even gave away the oversight to WMATA. And WMATA is apparently not doing it, or do you think that their hands are tied too because the original contract contains the problems, namely the standards aren't more, more advice coming. Um, These are my experts. OK. DDOT ultimately has to Because I'm happy to hear from anybody. I mean, it, 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 no matter what WMATA is part in it, it rests on DDOT. DDOT so, ultimately is the person who set up this whole scenario. But even still, if WMATA is supposed to be overseeing it, it seems like it, it has fallen down on the job. I mean, how much, how much does it take to oversee and say, the buses are dirty, clean the buses? Obviously, there's been a breakdown because if you got five to seven workers and you have a contract for $750,000 and all you do is advise DDOT, and maybe they gave DDOT advice, maybe that's some information the city council needs to do. What has WMATA advised uh, DDOT to do? Okay. Well, um, I have to turn to Mr. Evans. Uh, it's his turn. Thank you, uh, Council Member Chain. Thank you for that line of question. It was an excellent line of question that she was yes. delving into. It's kind and of confusing. It, it is. And uh, and Mr. Lyons, do you, do you want to say something? Because I you were going to testify here. Mr. Today. Lyons has been more hands on this project than yeah. he has. So go ahead, John. You can well just just, just so, kind of fill us in here. So I mean, if we're going to go back and and, and maybe I mean, tell Mr. Lyons, record. could you identify yourself for the record and also um, could I could we just pause for a moment? Sure, everyone. Okay. My name is John Lyons, J-O-H-N-L-Y-O-N-S. I work for the Amalgamated Transit Union International, and I've been the lead negotiator working with uh, uh, Trustee Rubain on the collective bargaining agreement between First Transit okay. and um, uh, the, the union. So if you, if you, if you wouldn't mind re-asking re the question, because I, I think I'd be able to, um, to, to, to sure. give you a much more informed answer. You can ask the question and give the answer. Go ahead. <laughs> so I, I, I believe the, 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 <laughs> I believe that the, the question was about WMATA's oversight and their and, and their ability and influence on right. on the contractor here to perform their job and the level of maintenance. So I, I mean the relationship between DDOT, uh, WMATA, and First Transit. It sounds complicated on the surface, but if you dig into it a little bit, you're going to see that it's really not all that complicated. DDOT contracts with or, or has an MOU with WMATA to procure the service to provide for the, for the DC circulator. And they have contracted that work out to First Transit. Now, DDOT pays a fee to WMATA on an annual basis to provide staff to oversee this contract. WMATA in turn puts out the RFP and the subsequent revenue agreement that essentially is fi the, the financial package for running the DC circulator. So when these, when these bids are put out, nine times out of 10, they're going to the lowest bidder or, or, or the lowest, most qualified <laughs> bidder. Without taking into consideration the parameters of 
the workforce that's already in place. And in the case of the circulator, it was an entirely new entity. It started from scratch, and this is something that it built up over years. And there are formulas that um, WMATA uses as part of its uh, RFP process for these potential bidders to calculate how much, uh, how much money it's going to cost them to provide the service. Now, what's unique about the, the RFP and the revenue agreement for the circulator is that maintenance costs are usually variable, right? They, uh, they, they, the company bills WMATA, WMATA or whatever agency it is based upon a cost per revenue hour. And maintenance costs and wages and a lot of other things are built into those costs. Here with this contract in particular, the maintenance prices are flat. It's a flat dollar amount. And those costs have been projected out over the life of the initial agreement and three years beyond. So I find it difficult to understand how we can predict what our maintenance costs are going to be that far out. And in knowing that the useful life of a vehicle is only about 12 years, how we haven't accounted for those major vehicle overhauls at some point during this agreement, because the numbers don't reflect that. And the audit, uh, when I read the audit, the auditor stated that First Transit, in its proposal, should have taken into consideration the fact that these major overhauls needed to be there. Okay, can, can I interrupt you one second? Sure. You're not on the witness list. Uh, Councilmember okay. Evans called you up as a witness. Uh, the clerk is giving you five minutes as if you are a witness. But can we do this through questioning of, of Councilmember yeah. Evans so that he can get his turn in? Absolutely. Yeah, no, this okay. is very helpful. Okay. Okay. And so let me uh, kind of, well, there's two points I want to make. First of all, this was all done before the current director and DDOT came into play. So Leif Dormstra, who's the current director, is on the WMATA board with me. I've talked to him about this, and he's very interested in helping here. That's so this is predates late. That's correct. So uh, when he comes up, I don't want to be yelling at him because he's actually a, an ally in this whole thing. And secondly, I just have to give an observation. You can yell at him anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have to give an observation because whenever I hear somebody talking about the lowest bidder, this is a story that maybe people can relate to. I remember as when the first the Mercury space program was taking off, they were going to finally send somebody up into space, and Alan Shepard was the first person who is going to go into space. And he looks at the Mercury space capsule. You know, the government was running this whole program and said, was this built by the lowest bidder? So anyway, it always reminds me of the lowest bidder. Maybe you have to be there to appreciate that. Um, but going back to our point here, so how do we get to the bottom of this thing? So it seems to me we have a governance, a salaries, and a maintenance issue here. So on the governance side, I will try and figure out if this is the best governance structure, because maybe the structure doesn't make sense anymore. But it sounds like if DDOT tells Metro to tell First Transit that we have more money to spend, that we want a contract with our workers that pays them a, a fair salary, a comparable salary, and has enough maintenance money in there to keep these things going, that that will improve the situation. It sounds like that. So we have to take and particularly if negotiations are going on now, it seems like this would be the time to do that. Is that, that that's 100% correct. That's right. So, okay, so we on our side, DDOT, have to say, this is how much we're willing to pay. We want our workers to be paid the salary that they should be getting paid, and we want maintenance in there. All right, so that's that would be issue number one to deal with the salaries. And then the maintenance side, it sounds like WMATA, and this is not uncommon, and what I'm finding out at WMATA is we just don't maintain anything. I mean, that's why I think the trains are catching on fire and the tracks and everything else. We're just not good at that. And we're, and we're going to be good at it, but we're not good now. So what WMATA has to do, if they're going to oversee this, is they have to do a better job than maybe having five people over at WMATA shuffling papers. I mean, is that your sense of this? I, I, absolutely. They, they, need to, uh, they, they, they need to make an investment in um, the maintenance at the DC circulator, they have to have their people there who are inspecting it, keep up on these inspections, keep up okay. on the records, make sure that the work is being done. And, and it has to be staffed properly to make sure the work can be done. And make sure that the maintenance of these things so that they last 20 years instead of 10 years, as you pointed out. Absolutely. Because that's that's where we fall down. And the third thing, and I'm done, and I'll leave you with this comment again. You know, we have these abstract discussions about maintenance and buses and sending things out that are dangerous. When we close that system down for the day, 
And there was discussion about it. Let me tell you, we had a conference call going on. Should we do it? Should we not do it? What do we do? But the most telling comment that was made that stopped everything, and, and you'd appreciate it is, would you send your child or your parent out on that bus? Would you send your parent or your child out on that train? OK? Maybe I'd go on it. But I'm not sure I want my kids to go on it or my parents to go on it if it's as unsafe as I'm being told. Right? That's and that, that is the determining question for all of us. This isn't an abstract discussion. Would you put your child on that circulator bus knowing what you know? No. And if that's the question, we've got to fix this. We've got to stop fooling around with this stuff and saying we don't have the money or, oh, my God, or washing our hands or doing all this crazy stuff. And the last thing on the employees is when you don't pay your employees, you know this, we get circulator people, we train them, they're good, and what do they do? Go to they leave, right? Because yes. they can get paid double going to work for Metro yes. or those places in Virginia or Maryland. I mean, it is so, we dealt with this in our other areas, in our police department, our teacher. That's why we pay everybody so much. Mm -hmm. We want to keep them. We train them. We have good people, and we don't want them to leave. And so it's both. It's fair on one hand, but it's also practical on the other. So I've given my, again, sermon, just a comment, not a sermon, River. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but that's where we're coming down. So let's work together and see what we can do here, okay? Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.